Hi, hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. Now, a few months ago, I released a track called Pool, which was the second in my Element series. It's an ambient slash modern classical-ish track, and I've had a few requests to go through the production on it, and so that's what this video is going to be. I'm just going to talk you through how I composed the track, produced it, and the different elements that went into it. If you haven't heard the track before, then I'll put a link up there and in the description for you to listen to. So the production on this track can basically be split up into four different sections. You've got piano, cello, vocals, ambience and textures. That's pretty much it and I went into the track knowing that I wanted it to be something that was very simple. Let's take a look at the piano first as it is the primary instrument throughout the track. Now I recorded all of the piano on my lovely little Zender six octave upright piano using what's effectively a giant piece of dishcloth as the felt. These days I have a rather more fancy microphone setup for my piano, but back when I recorded this track, the setup was much more simple. It's just a pair of T-Bone SC140s about $90 from Tomon. Now, as you can see here, I recorded the piano parts uh, just in stereo. So one mic hard left, one mic hard right. And I didn't do a huge amount of processing to them. I've taken off the plugin so you can hear what the raw recording of those microphones sounds like. Pretty nice, and I would actually say that I prefer the way that it sounds without the reverb that I actually added into the final track. Um, that's a change in taste thing. I'm sure that you'll find when you're producing and go through phases where you like things being drenched in reverb times that you start to prefer a more organic and intimate, very sort of naked sounding recording. And um, yeah, it, it, it sounds really nice. And this is the thing, you don't need fancy microphones because that's a lovely piano recording and the mics used were like the definition of budget mics. Anyway, so as you can see, I played through the whole track. Now I did a bit of Frankensteining in, you know, areas like this here, as well as further along in these sorts of bits. This is because it's quite difficult sometimes to get the perfect take, especially when you're recording a old creaky piano like mine. Occasionally you'll play the notes right, but there'll be a really, really loud sort of pedal noise or flutter or something that'll happen. And so I tend to record my piano all the way through multiple times and basically just comp together the best takes. One of the other issues I had when I was first recording this track, um, if I show the hidden tracks, which kind of demonstrate all of the mistakes that I made, is this was the first recording, but the click track that I was playing to was way too loud in the headphones. So if I just play this, you can actually hear the click playing in the quieter sections. really annoying when that happens because it always seems to be when you've got what you think is the perfect take. Anyway, back to the piano. This is the primary piano here. I added in another recording, which as far as I can remember is just an octave up. And if you're curious about the actual processing I did to the piano, I use this plugin called Auto Align, uh, which is basically just a phase aligner. I basically will put this on a stereo source if it's something that I'm worried that there might be phase issues with. One as the sends, and then this one is going to be a receive. And when I play it, you can see the like areas in the stereo field where there are, there's some phase issues happening, and it kind of just gets rid of them. It breathes realism into it by dealing with the phase issues that are going on in the stereo fields that you wouldn't necessarily pick up on. It's not something that you'd listen to that piano and be like, oh, that sounds out of phase, but just fixes things a little bit. I love it. And then in terms of the overall processing on the piano, three plugins and a send. So this is, I imagine, just a room reverb, yeah? So if I just listen. See, right now I'm thinking that that's horrible. I'm going to add an EQ to it because it's got some really weird, nasty, high frequency thing. Yeah. 
All of that there is disgusting. I don't know. It's been out for like six months, so nothing I can do about it now. So that's one room reverb. Valhalla reverbs are really, really good. So let me take that off and just walk you through the plugins that are on the piano. It's basically, Stephen Slate's virtual mix rack, which is great. I have had a subscription to the Slate audio suite for I think about three years now. Um, and I, I didn't really do anything. I can't remember. I probably changed a few of these settings. Um, when I first did this, but this is literally just a preset, just classic strip piano. And I felt like it just helped bring the piano forward a bit in the mix. Obviously it makes it louder, but it was the compression that I was after. I think I wanted it to feel like the piano was really, really close because there are lots of elements that are quite far away in this. So if I just play that from the beginning with that off and then I'll add it in. Now, obviously the high frequency boosts here are gonna be helping to add that kind of sizzle and character into it, a bit noisy, almost like it's going through tape, but it's just, it's the compression that I felt was doing a really, really nice smooth job. And then after that, I just chucked it through another Valhalla reverb. It's this one here, so without. And then after that, it was just a tiny, tiny bit of EQ there. I mean, that's basically doing nothing. What's that like 0.15 for decibel of dynamic peak reduction. So that's doing nothing. I've probably just like my own peace of mind. But yeah, as you can see, the piano is just the same thing repeated twice. But what I wanted with the track is to have this sense of like slow development, slow build. Um, and again, like without sounding too pretentious, I wanted the track to like represent water. I wanted it to feel like this kind of flowing, undulating thing that was happening all the time. And usually when I want that sort of vibe, I will reach for my cello, which I can still sort of play. So let's talk about that next part, the strings. Now, I try to record real sound sources as much as possible, and this track is no exception. So while there are some sample libraries used in the strings here, they're more textural than anything else. The body of the strings is just me playing my cello through a blue baby bottle microphone, which I've had for years and years and years. It's what I've recorded most things through for the past five years. I only recently got this 251 clone that I'm recording things on now. So let's have a look at how that sounds and what that looks like. So we started off with a simple two part harmony that then grew and grew and grew. And I kept everything very low down on the cello at first because the piano is kind of up in the middle a bit more. And I wanted this to, I don't know, just, just feel a bit dark, like underwater stuff kind of bubbling away. Now, obviously I'm not a very good cellist. I, you know, I learned it when I was at school and I've done no like formal practice since I finished school. So I can't play, you know, virtuoso, brilliant cello, but it doesn't matter how like good or bad you are at an instrument. If you can get a recording that works with what you're doing, that's the most important thing. So the cello then grows until we have this kind of big full bit here.
sounds really bad on its own. Sorry about that. Now, again, in terms of processing, there's very little going on. It's just being sent to uh, the same room reverb as the piano to kind of like make everything feel like it belongs in the same space. And then another instance of the Slate Virtual Mix Rack, which is effectively just like a bit of compression, a bit of EQ, and just a bit of like boosting of things. <laughs> I like things to shimmer a little bit. So nothing major, and I don't actually think any of this sounds very good at all now. It's a classic thing where you like don't like anything that you've done after like a couple of months. I think it all sounds terrible. It does sound terrible though. Fuck. Anyway, so with the sampled element of the strings, I knew that I couldn't play the cello high enough and make any sort of desirable sound from it whatsoever. But I wanted the very end of the track to have this sense of like, Ooh, everything has started off kind of a bit like this, and now it's all like that. Yeah, so I threw in some additional string parts here that are just effectively like mirroring what the cello is doing, but up the octave. So on their own, you know, it sounds like sampled strings, but when they're mixed in with the real recordings, it sounds quite nice. It's a very good way of hiding your own imperfections when you're playing. Now, imperfections are the things that make something sound real, you know, being able to hear uh, the, the, the soft tremble of a bow as the player runs out of room for the note, you know, at the end of a take. This is the stuff that makes things sound real and makes them sound good when they're recorded. But sometimes, uh, if you've got nothing but that, it'll just sound a bit bad. And so if you're self-conscious about your own playing on something, just try layering it with a sample and probably sound really nice. Now, because the strings are swelling up and down, you know, like water, automation is really important. And as you can see from this, I have done volume automation on everything that's basically playing. I'm not gonna lie, me looking at this now, it looks like a really lazy project to me because these days I would do that individually for each line. So maybe I was a bit short for time on it. Promised a single and knew I had to deliver it. So I just did it on the whole summing stack. So those are the strings, mostly very mediocre cello playing, um, disguised with some quite nice samples towards the very end. Again, like I wanted it at the beginning to feel close and intimate and, and right like you're there. The third ingredient in this track were the vocals. <laughs> This is going to be quite embarrassing for me to show you because I don't really like singing. But as an experiment, when the track started, I thought I'll try some vocals to see if I could get some like textures, which is sort of what they are, but they, they grew into something a bit more. So here are all of the vocals in the track. As you, you can see, there are quite a lot. Ignore the flute. The flute is another thing. So all of these vocals are just me in this room, usually recording like an ad lib and seeing where it goes and if I like any of the musical moments that I came up with. But they start off with some hums. We get a bit more happening in this section here. It's basically following what the cello is doing. Very similar in terms of the notation. Um, with just some extra little moments of harmony added in there. But yeah, so I have all of this, which is kind of like the paddy stuff, but then I I did some 
bigger vocals towards the end and I again I, I didn't want to like copy and paste stuff and knew I needed to sing each part differently and then yeah here I think we get some quite loud ones my neighbors were probably pretty annoyed when I was doing this A bit much, one could argue, but I wanted there to be a sort of juxtaposition. And you can't hear that very much when it's put in the mix with things. It's... So those are the vocals. Processing some EQ again, because so much of that space there needs to be available for the piano. And my voice is quite like low mid heavy sometimes so just take that out and that brings us on to the final sort of element of this which are the synths and the atmospheres now there are quite a few different ones the first one i'll go through is is the flute here which is kind of technically one of the atmospheres now i have uh, an irish low d whistle and i'm terrible at playing it but it can sometimes be a good source of inspiration or just feel like a weird sound you know you never know when some breath thing that you do will end up sounding really cool through a certain delay as you can see from this here file very little of it sounded interesting or good but there were one or two moments that i kept in there i can also remember doing a lot of this and wanting to keep it in but knowing that it was sort of just getting in the way of everything else like the piano is the main thing strings are just secondary to that everything else should just be incidental and kind of there but kind of not so piano strings vocals everything else so let's have a listen to what some of those little bits sound like So that's one little textural thing that I threw in there. And the most of the rest of the textures um, were basically uh, me playing around on synths. And again, this is like the way that I work so frequently is that I'll have like the base of an idea. So that in this case was the piano. And then I'll just spend a few hours sat at my Prophet Rev 2 or OB6 or any number of synths, like anything can work and just, just play around with sounds and see and like have it recording the whole time. Um, just do loads of pass-throughs and then kind of go through and find things that you're like, oh, that's nice, but it goes to the wrong note there, so maybe I'll re-record that bit. Or, you know, like all of this kind of stuff just adds towards the, the, the finished track. Little synth sounds that kind of are just peppered in there, like bends and things like that, sound like this. But yeah, so I've got bends, I've got some just like washy pads like this one. And this one. With just a filter slowly opening up again to add to like the sense of you know growth and progression throughout the track i recorded some sort of low bass for it i don't know what i did with the eq on it yeah so it's kind of just sub bass in a way now there was one synth that was really quite important to me during the the production and i knew needed to sound a certain way and that is this synth here which i kind of just refer to as my little bubbler synth the purpose of this synth was very much related to the water theme so i knew that the big swells and kind of grandiose but intimate feeling of the piano and the strings was doing its job. But with water, I always feel like there are at least two different movements that you're seeing. There's the greatest swell of whatever is going on, you know, beneath the surface and, and the overall feeling. 
But then when you look at like a body of water, even a calm one, the, the rippling on just the surface and the way that that gets broken by an insect landing in it or, or just the wind blowing across it, it, it always looks so like, like not frantic, that's the wrong word, but there's a lot of movement and energy going on on the surface of water always. And I just really, really wanted to have something within the track that was kind of giving you that. So you've got this very slow paced, flowy, undulating piece of music with something just teasing energy at you and that's what that synth is supposed to be it's the surface of the water and that's why it's just super fast super rhythmic this up i sent the midi into that because i couldn't play it that fast consistently and then just let the midi play through as you can see here it goes up the octave there and played with the filter cutoff while it was going along again i did like five or six different takes of it um because there was somewhere i went a bit too far but this synth is one of the kind of most important aspects of this track for me even though it's something that a lot of people probably don't really like notice that much and that is pool the original project was so messy and disorganized um i kind of spent a bit of time organizing this so that I could present it a bit better to you. But that's it. The only other elements really are just uh, the odd little bit of sample piano um, that I threw in just to, I don't even know why, what's this doing? I uh, just to like reinforce the upper octave a bit. I think same with this. And I think I used that mostly for the like the noise, the additional noise that it gave it. So that is basically pool. I'm sorry it's not a more like exciting walkthrough because it's mostly just organic sounds and organic recordings and organic instruments. There's not a huge amount of like technical stuff going on there. But that's where I am with my music at the moment is I'm trying to find ways to like just record as much real stuff as possible because I do feel like while samples can do amazing things, obviously, there are very few substitutes for something real. And I think that a lot of people can hear the difference subconsciously even. If there's not a huge amount to talk about, it's basically just I played my piano for a bit and then I played my cello for a bit and I chucked some synths on top of it and uh, please go stream it now. But thank you for watching if you still are and thank you for your interest in my music. And again, I, I say this with every one of these walkthroughs I do because I always do the walkthrough of a track like eight months after I released it. In my mind, it's like that project is not good. Um, so I hope that it doesn't come across as bad to anyone who's like now able to see what it's like. It was just one of those tracks that very much came together organically and naturally and sort of just wrote itself. There were moments where I tried to overcomplicate it, but always try to like rein that back a little bit. Yeah. Thank you for watching. And uh, if you have any other questions or other specific tracks that you want to see a breakdown of, then let me know down in the comment section. All of the links are in the description to my Instagram and socials and all of that. If you've enjoyed this video and want to see more of my content, it'd be great if you could give the video a cheeky thumbs up and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more. Thank you so much for watching. Have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you soon.